I was one of the children of Biafra. And therefore, when I'm coming to the United Nations, I know what it means to experience war, not at the war front, but as a victim, a victim that is innocent. It is amazing to see that people that are shooting at each other at the United Nations sit in the same hall. They may hurl insults at one another, they may shout at one another, but at least they are talking to one another. Um, we are primarily priests before being diplomats. And um, as priests, we are bridge builders. This as a foretaste of the, in my opinion, highly interesting interview with the new nuncio to the UN in Geneva. Himself a victim of the effects of the civil war between Nigeria and Biafra in his early childhood in 1967, the new nuncio brings his unique personal experiences to the United Nations Forum in Geneva. Archbishop Vachukwu was born in Nigeria in 1960. He studied philosophy and theology and was ordained a priest at the age of 24. He also studied in Rome as well as at the Philosophical Theological University of St. Georgen in Frankfurt am Main and in Jerusalem. Bridge builder at the UN in Geneva. Greetings to this special edition of EWTN TV UN Blog. Pope Francis had appointed in December last year his new representative to the United Nations in Geneva. His Excellency Archbishop Fortunatus Varchukvu took office in Geneva a few days ago. I am pleased and thank you, Excellency, for taking time for our interview. Good afternoon, Christian. Your Excellency, you have joined the Holy See mission to the United Nations in Geneva at a very critical time in world history. Briefly on current events, before we then also want to know something about you and your very extensive past. You are currently attending the 49th session of the UN Human Rights Council. What is your first impression? Can the UN really do anything to help end the current Ukraine conflict? Well, my first impression is that of returning to a very important forum. Yes, the UN has an important role to play in contributing um, to the peace we are all looking for, we are all praying for in Ukraine. Because the UN is a platform, is a forum uh, for dialogue, is a meeting place for the parts involved in the conflicts and um, also a meeting place of the allies of both parties involved in the conflict. And we cannot um, reach uh, durable peace, lasting peace, without dialogue. We know very well that um, peace that is imposed is only um, uh, war that is postponed while Peace that is agreed, peace that is re reached through dialogue, is um, lasting peace, is durable peace. Yes, by providing a forum uh, for dialogue, a forum uh, for exchanges between the two parties involved, the United Nations um, is playing already a very important role. You were previously papal nuncio to the Caribbean and apostolic delegate to the Antilles, as well as plenipotentiary of the Holy See to the Caribbean community. Your Excellency, I ask your predecessors the same questions. How do you manage to wear two hats, so to speak, that of a diplomat and that of a Catholic priest? Well, I think that the two hats are actually um, related one uh, to the other. Um, we are primarily priests before being diplomats. 
And um, as priests, we are bridge builders. I would like to take you back to the Bible. We represent uh, the Pope, and the Pope represents Christ. He's the successor of Peter. And Christ is presented as a high priest. We read in the letter to the Hebrews, I'm going back to the Bible, as I said, um, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 1, or if you want to go further also, chapter 4, verse 14, chapter 4, verse 15, or chapter 5, verse 1. We go to any of them. We have Jesus Christ presented as the high priest. Um, and it's interesting. The Latin text of these um, passages uses the word for high priest, it uses the word pontifex, from which we have pontifical. So um, uh, if Jesus Christ as high priest is pontifex, that means pons, pontis is bridge, fex is from facere, which is in, in Latin to make. So um, he's, uh, the high priest is a bridge builder. Um, and that is our work as um, diplomats and as priests. We are supposed to be first and foremost um, bridge builders, um, carrying on with the mission of Jesus Christ of building bridge between God and humanity. And so as priests, as um, other Christs, among our people, we are supposed to be pontifical. And that is also what it means by representing the Pope, who is now the supreme pontiff. We are supposed to be pontifical in our mission. That is, we are supposed to be bridge builders. A diplomat is essentially a bridge builder. He goes to facilitate um, peaceful relationships between governments and between nations. That should not surprise us because if you do not have people that facilitate good relations between nations, the danger will be that of having people pursuing their own personal interests, which often conflict with one another. So the priest is essentially a diplomat. Well, first and foremost, in searching for good relationship between human beings and God. But as priest diplomats, we also carry that further to the forum of nations, bringing to this forum what we are trained to be what we are ordained to be, and that is pontificals. Um, that means bridge builders. So being a priest and being a diplomat are not contradictory. Being a priest and being a diplomat could actually be uh, complementary. They complete one another. Of course, we have to understand being a diplomat in the right sense. Diplomacy does not mean having double tongue, as people think uh, from the word, for example, duplex or duplicate. We know that the original word diploma um, means having, uh, means a folded document. Um, and that means a certificate. So we are supposed to be people that are certified that carry um, the certificate given to us by the Supreme Pontiff to become bridge builders in his name and through him in the name of Jesus Christ. So primarily we are priests and then as part of our special mission, the special mandate we receive, we become diplomats in this forum of the nations. Many of the ambassadors and representatives of organizations at the United Nations have no personal experience of war, hunger and despair. In your case, however, you have experienced all of this firsthand. 
So you are speaking from personal knowledge? Well, I think so. Um, I think I come to the United Nations with a baggage of um, experiences. First, um, from the point of view of my own personal experience, my own personal life, and then experiences that I have gathered um, serving as a diplomat of the Holy See. I begin with my own personal life and experience. While I was still a young boy, I was only seven years old when um, I was caught up in the midst of um, a civil conflict, one of the most horrible, horrendous uh, civil conflicts of the last century. This was in 1967, the outbreak of the Nigeria Biafra Civil War. I was one of the children of Biafra. I'm sure that some of you, some many people in the West and other parts of the world saw these children with their stomachs um, blown and um, uh, malnourished, sick and suffering. Um, the people of Biafra felt they had been forgotten and abandoned by the rest of humanity. Um, but for the intervention of groups like the Caritas Internationalis and a few nations that not politically, but from the point of view of humanitarian uh, assistance, passed through Caritas Internationalis and other uh, such agencies to come to our rescue. Some of us managed to survive. I lost many of my peers. I lost two of my own sisters. And um, so I knew right from a very early age what it means to pass through a situation of war. I know what it means to experience hunger. I know what it means to be an internally displaced person. So I know the experience of being a refugee. I know the experience of living away from my home. I lost my father and mother for a long period. We were five and we were under my eldest brother who was only 13 and we had nothing, we just had to survive. So I know what it means to go through suffering. And um, I lost years of um, education, three years from 1967 to 1970. And therefore, when I'm coming to the United Nations, I know what it means to experience war, not at the war front, but as a victim, a victim that is innocent. I know what it means to experience hunger, illness without the presence of any medication. I know what it means to feel um, one is being, has been abandoned by the rest of humanity, or what it means to feel one has been, is being discriminated against in one's own nation. So I bring all this baggage of experiences to my current work. So when a person is going to talk to me about discrimination, about violence, about injustice, I think I have experienced them all in my own skin. Um, moving around the world, I have served also in different uh, parts of the world. I began my service in Ghana. Togo and Benin, a beautiful experience. I went to um, Paraguay, and then um, I also, each country has its own peculiar experience. Paraguay had had the, uh, the war um, his, in its history against Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay, and then let it had the war of Chaco against um, uh, Bolivia. Thanks to God, there is peace in the whole region. But of course, once you have experienced war, the scars of the war um, continue with you. No one, I repeat, no one remains unscathed by war. Even the person that claims or the people that claim they have won the war, you do not win anything. You only resolve issues by dialogue. As I said at the beginning, peace 
imposed by force of war is only war postponed. Because when the people who feel they have been vanquished someday feel they have regained the capacity to regain what they think they lost, they will come again to renew the war. The only way to reach durable, lasting peace is by dialogue. So I have this experience. I also then from there, from Paraguay, went to um, Algeria and Tunisia. And this was during the time of the uh, crisis in Algeria, during which we also as Christians, we lost our Christians who were there. They were not involved in anything. They lost their lives because they were Christians caught up in a, a period of um, crisis in a country. Um, so I bring uh, to uh, my service here what I will call my own baggage of experiences. And um, I hope that when I will be intervening, I will be intervening from this point of view. I will have nothing new to say because our mandate is the same. Our mission is the same. We have the same mandate that comes from the Holy Father, that comes from the Holy See. Our mission is exactly the same. But of course, the way we fulfill that mission, the way we speak, the way we transmit the message that is entrusted to us is usually colored um, by the experiences that we have uh, grown with, that we have gathered along the years. What, in your opinion, is the most impressive quality that the United Nations have? <laughs> that is an easy question. Um, the United Nations provides um, a meeting point, a forum, a platform for dialogue. I, I repeat what I've said before. The best way to solve conflicts is by dialogue. If you use force and you use um, high-handedness in imposing anything on a party in order to show that you are stronger, you are only postponing the conflict because there is also going to be um, lack of satisfaction on the other part. And the big thing that the United Nations offers is this forum, this platform for dialogue um, between the various countries in the world. It is a meeting place. It is amazing to see that people that are shooting at each other at the United Nations sit in the same hall. They may hurl insults at one another. They may shout at one another, but at least they are talking to one another. And sooner or later, we pray, we hope that some sense is going to come in. They say that even the madman has got friends. Uh, we don't know who is mad or who is not, but whoever that person may be, sometime, sooner or later, some people are praying, some people are talking to their hearts, sooner or later, something is going to move, and the United Nations provides that platform. I think that is the most important thing. The most important thing is that people are talking, because if you do not talk, then other solutions will be sought. Your Excellency, in this context, in our so much media-oriented, indeed almost media-dependent society, how do you see our work, the work of EWTN? And then in conclusion, I'd like to ask you to extend your blessings to our EWTN viewers. Most willingly, most willingly, because I think what you do is very important. What you do is very important, because quite often people ask, um, why is the Holy See there? They think that um, the United Nations is a place where we have uh, people trying to create a, a new world order uh, that is trying to oppress the poorer people and that is trying to throw away all the good values. But with this type of service, um, it is possible for uh, people to see that not the United Nations should not be demonized. The United Nations should be recognized for what it does. It brings together 
everybody and it gives a forum for everybody's voice to be heard. People do, that would have been, uh, whose voices would have been suffocated or would have been ignored ordinarily, we have this forum. And your um, channel, your means, um, provides the opportunity for um, ordinary people uh, to be able to see, to perceive, and to appreciate what is being done, especially by the Holy See, knowing that what we bring to the United Nations is the voice of Jesus Christ, as it is um, handed down through the Pope and through the Holy See to everybody. The Holy See does not speak except according to the gospel message, the message of the gospel. I like to say um, the Holy See says what Christ will say and does what Christ would do, supports the words and the actions of Jesus Christ. That is our mission. And where do we find the words and actions? Of course, the words you find in the Gospels, the action of Jesus Christ, the summary. What was Jesus' mission? He announced it himself. I would like to refer maybe at this moment to the Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 4, verse 18, when Jesus arrived, um, entered the synagogue in Nazareth, and he was given the scroll of the prophet Isaiah to read, and he read, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me, one, to bring good news to the poor, the poor, to bring liberty to the captives, the captives, to help those that are oppressed, the oppressed, and to make present the year of grace of the Lord. This is our mission, thinking of the poor, the oppressed, those that have lost their liberty for one reason or the other, and to make sure that the grace of the Lord is felt in this fora. That is our mission. And by your message, by your transmission, you are able at least to let the people know that even at the United Nations, this voice, the voice for peace, the voice in favor of the poor, of the oppressed, of the voiceless, even the original text in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2, mentions the brokenhearted and those who mourn. Today especially, we have many brokenhearted persons in the world, especially in Ukraine. And we are with them. And I tell you also, we have people that are brokenhearted even in Russia. Nobody, nobody who is in his right or her right senses loves war. The death of one single person is too much. And I'm sure that the Russians and the Ukrainians agree on this. We don't want anybody to die. Nobody wants this conflict. So we pray that reason will come in and that peace will soon be found. We are thinking of all the people that are there. And we call on all the people, the leaders, the citizens, hey, they are all Christians, Orthodox Christians. Maybe not all, but the majority are Christians. How can we understand this? Christians killing Christians. And we go about, we are proud doing that. What are we going to win? 
So thank you for giving this opportunity. And it is our prayer that more and more people through this, your channel, through this, your transmission, will be able to understand better and pray along with us that good reason will come to reign among the decision makers, especially in these two countries, Russia and Ukraine. Thank you very much. And may the Lord bless you. Bless your keep. Bless even the people that listen to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your precious time, Excellency. You are, I am sure, a blessing to the mission and to the UN in Geneva. Thank you so very much again. Thank you. Thank you, Christian.